Today, we're talking about how to add details to your garb, and I'm gonna start by committing a sin. We're thinking about it wrong. Details are a byproduct. The real reason you clicked on this video is because you want to know how to make your garb more authentic. Greetings, adventurers. My name is Kramer, and hold on, I will explain. It's very easy to look at a world or a character design and think, wow, this, this, this character has so many details. Those details make it more authentic. So in order to make my character authentic, I must add details to it. And I've had to give this a lot of thought while I was creating this video, but I now believe this to be backwards. It is rather that the character is very authentic, and therefore we notice a lot of details. The phrase, add detail implies that it is a step that can come afterwards, that you can design a character first and then put details on. And I used to think that. I used to think that adding details came as a later step just so that you could like personalize your garb. But detail is a noun, which just means a particular or a part, which does nothing to help us identify what those details should actually be. And technically speaking, all of the parts of your garb are details then. To say that something is detailed is similarly unhelpful because it just describes that something has details. And if you use detail as a verb, it simply means to add details to something. So all of it is just way too broad. So instead of asking the question, how can I add details to my character, which is honestly very vague, we're going to ask the question, how can I make my costume more authentic? Because to make a costume authentic means that it has to start at its inception, from the very beginning of the design process. All three of the primary definitions of authentic are what we are striving for, and coincidentally why so many modern character designs on the silver screen seem to just feel a little flat. Something authentic is worthy of acceptance or belief as conforming to or based on fact. Something conforming to an original so as to reproduce essential features, or something made or done the same way as an original. A detail is just a part or an element. A design on your van brace is a detail, but the van brace itself is also a detail. It's all details. But the ultimate goal is to make your garb look more realistic, more lived in, more believable, to take it from being a costume into being clothes. Not to just add details for the sake of details. So first I'm gonna tell you what advice I think you should ignore, then I'm gonna tell you what things I think you should do, and then I'm going to show you what I do. And we're gonna try on a couple different costume elements here, right here in the video, and try to put a look together. But first I have to take a moment to tell you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Making videos for YouTube has come with a really steep learning curve, and there is a lot that goes into it, from writing the scripts, to doing the research, to learning how the camera functions, to then editing the footage that you've shot, to color grading, to sound design, to lighting, and you don't know what it is that you don't know until that problem rears its ugly head. And that is something that I really appreciate about Skillshare, because a well-structured lesson with a good teacher will tell you what it is that you need to know, and then explain that information to you so you can dedicate your time to actually learning, rather than wasting your time researching what it is that you need to learn in the first place. For example, I just finished the course An Introduction to Filmmaking by David Ritchie. Really great introductory course, and it lays out all of the logistical stuff from pre and post production to marketing. And I realized that I need to learn more about camera lenses. And because of the huge range of lessons offered on Skillshare, it's very easy to find a course specifically about that. Skillshare takes away all of the guesswork and gives you control over your own learning process so that you can dedicate your very precious time to learning about things that interest you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. And that very accurately describes us, so I'm really happy to be partnering with Skillshare. The first 1,000 people who use my link down below are going to get a full month free on Skillshare, so you can explore any number of courses, from filmmaking to creative writing to character design and illustrations, and even some crafts like leatherworking. So definitely check out Skillshare, and a super huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. One of the most common pieces of advice that I see for new people into the hobby, whether that's LARPing or fantasy reenactment or even historical reenactment, is that you should add details by picking things that are related to your backstory and then putting them onto your character, like a trinket. I'm going to take a slightly unorthodox approach. Don't do this. Don't think that you have to add elements of sentimental value to your costume in order to set yourself apart or make you look interesting. It is not character development, it is not world building, and it is not authentic. 
This advice frames it such that the addition of the detail is the most important thing. It doesn't matter what the detail is, it simply matters that you have it. And remember, this is advice that's generally given to new people into the hobby, which means they're not gonna have the experience to know what types of details to add, but they are going to be tricked into thinking that just because they've added something, that they have accomplished their task. But remember that the goal of your garb is not to look interesting. It is to tell a story about your character without you having to say anything. Otherwise, you're just including elements simply so that people can ask you about them. You might as well have a little sticker on your chest that says, hello, my name is Barnabas. Ask me about my backstory. Say you are a character that has a staff. You should be able to justify through your backstory why it is that you have the staff. It shouldn't just be there for no reason. And you might be able to explain that your master gave it to you with his dying breath as he said to you that you should go and fulfill your destiny. And you said, I'm not ready. And he said, that's how I know you are. And now you carry that staff with you for the rest of your life to remind you of your master's teachings. And that's all fine. That's very good. But the staff itself needs to be authentic in its design too. It's not enough that you just have it. What color is it? How is it decorated? Is it even decorated? Was it decorated? And then over many years, lots of decorations have fallen off. Is the handle weather-worn from decades and decades of use? All of those things can be influenced by the history of your character. They should be. But I shouldn't have to know that backstory in order to appreciate the staff. I should be able to look at the staff and see the story in the staff. As a designer, you should be able to explain all of the choices of your design and why they're there. But as a storyteller, you shouldn't have to. Personally, I think you should let those sentimental story details about your character evolve organically within the story and be given to you by real, actual people rather than you just trying to make them up. Because then you're just pretending, and pretending isn't authentic. Now, if we're talking about garb accents or flavor additions, not in terms of taste, but you know what I mean, like uh, color pops, embroidery, laces, leather tooling, all things like that, should already be elements of the design. They should be drawing from your history and the culture of your character, and you need to already know what those are. They can't really be manufactured and then added afterwards. They have to be there from the start. Not everybody is gonna have the experience necessary to do that, and that's okay. I can't make a video helping you design that because there's just too many variables. I'd have to talk to you personally. I'm also not a designer. I, this, is, this is just my thoughts. So instead, I think it's much more helpful to focus on practical things we can do to increase authenticity. And what I can do is show you what I do and encourage you to watch the making of for Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings because it is an absolute masterclass in what follows from what and proper thought processes for design. So now we know what to avoid. How do you increase authenticity? Put on your garb and live in it. Learn the intricacies of how it functions, how you move in it, and how you use each of the different pieces, because that is all detail that cannot be manufactured or layered on afterwards. And by knowing how everything functions, you will be more authentic and you will be able to start making practical adjustments and additions and start removing things that you don't like because where you wear your pouches, that is a detail. And all of the other things like dirt, travel stains, patches from repairs, stuff like that, all of that will just be added on naturally over the course of you wearing your garments as if they're actually clothes, and they should be. We'll get to that in a second. But you will also start to notice how things deteriorate, in what order they deteriorate, and from that you can then make inferences so that you can start expediting that deterioration and weather your garments without having to get into the theory of knowing exactly all of the elements of the design. Though if you wanted to take a course on Skillshare of that, of course you could. But if you just live in your clothes, you don't have to worry about any of that because it will all come naturally. The most common places for deterioration to occur are generally at your joints, especially on your arms because you move them so much. So your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders, you'll start to see wrinkles appearing. You'll start to see discoloration from, from light or from sweat, stuff like that. You can also run your clothes through the dryer a couple of times or just leave them out in the sun. I'm not telling you to damage your, your garments. Make sure that they're not going to shrink or tear or burn or anything like that. But that is a technique that was used on the Lord of the Rings set in order to add years of weathering without having to actually spend years doing it. In order to make sure that you actually enjoy wearing your garb and that it functions as intended is to make sure that you are choosing materials that are proven to work historically. Silk, linen, wool, maybe some suede. Some materials are going to patina and weather better than other ones are. Stay away from synthetic fabrics. The human eye is very capable of identifying when there is synthetic fabrics. It's like uncanny valley, but for clothes. 
and synthetic fabrics are going to go from looking spotlessly clean to downright dirty with zero in-betweener nuance. You should also stay away from cotton because cotton absorbs moisture very quickly and then sheds it very, very slowly. It's not going to be comfortable. Try looking for materials that add some depth, have some texture, maybe a brocade or something that is embroidered, but you don't want something that is either printed on or ironed on. You want something that you can touch and that you can feel, something that's real, that will create shadows when the light hits it. Again, stay away from cotton. Cotton is a very flat fabric. It's going to wash out completely in the sun, look very one-dimensional. So now we're going to do a fun little experiment. I'm wearing this just for the beginning of the video, but I have a whole pile of stuff right there, and we're going to start trying various pieces on. The form that I'm going for, the, the look that I want to create, is I want you to look at my character and think, that guy is a ranger from the Lord of the Rings. And if I'm very lucky, you'll think, that could be a young Aragorn, but I know that I don't look like Aragorn, so I won't deign to hope for that, but I can dream. And then after I'm done showing off the various looks, you can drop your thoughts in the comments below which one you think works the best, and then that will influence what I start wearing on the channel, especially as we start getting into the fall, and then I'll make a dedicated video about that showing off all of the different details. And by details, I mean elements. So this is obviously a very simple design to start with. I've got a linen shirt on, I've got a uh, leather jerk in here, the bottom is duck cloth, and then I've got green pants and uh, greenish brownish suede boots. So what happens if I add my gambus? I'm trying to design this so that it sort of evokes that Aragorn feel. He's got his long duster, I'm using the gambeson, but you will notice that it only has half sleeves. Um, I'm honestly not sure that I think this works. Something about this... Something about this just isn't really working for me. It doesn't really evoke that Middle Earth feel. But I also designed it so they're the same length, so I can wear the gambeson underneath the jerk and we'll see how that works. I changed my shirt because I think maybe the, the white and the black was clashing too much. It didn't really look Middle Earth, it looked, I don't know, too gothic or something. I think the shirt helps a little bit. I think this is a little better. Something still doesn't feel quite correct. You know, I think it's the collar. I think it's the collar in the neckline. Um, but the collar stands very tall. And when I wear the gambeson underneath, it doesn't have that sort of rugged wanderer type look to me. This is very much, this is very much a witcher style. But let me know what you think. I think the green shirt does help a lot. The white the white, it really wouldn't work, but I, I think the collar is wrong. Something that I've noticed about myself, I think it's because of the color of my hair. It's very difficult for me to wear black because not only does a lot of it blend in, um, but it's I always I I, I, <laughs> I always end up looking like a vampire or a pirate too. If I if I leave my shirt too open, I always look like a pirate. And that that might be down to the facial hair. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time for a shave or something like that. What do you guys think? Maybe if the gambeson was a different color, I, I just don't know. See, this is a fun experiment you can do if you have a, a, a decent amount of, of, of material to work with. Just change out one thing and see what new story you can tell. I've got a black cardigan with a hood on it. We're gonna try that next. I don't know, maybe we're getting closer. I, it's still too much black. It's still too much black, isn't it? Something about this, it just doesn't say Middle Earth to me. I'm gonna put bracers on. Adding these sort of breaks up the, the coloration on the arm. And I actually like these a lot. These were, I think these are handmade. These were sent to me by a friend of the channel. I generally don't like fan braces at all, but these are these are nice thick leather. They feel very nice. I think. Yeah, I definitely think I definitely think the van brace is, is necessary in, in all iterations. Let's go ahead and try the hood. Now I look like an Assassin's Creed character. This is another cardigan, gray this time. Both of the cardigans are from Wish, and I just think that's funny because if I nail this, it will prove that you can get stuff from Wish and have it look good. I know the people have been saying that the Rings of Power costumes look like they're from Wish. If I pull it off, then uh, it can work. <laughs> you know, how you lace your garment is also a detail that you will work out simply by wearing your garments because it's probably difficult to see on the camera, but I'm actually not lacing every single lace hole that I have. I'm lacing every other one. And that says something. It either says that I'm lazy or that I didn't have enough string. I like the coloration of this a lot better. And I think just the shirt and the jerkin maybe isn't, uh, isn't enough, doesn't add enough depth. Would also be kind of cold. I think this coloration is a lot better it's got a good texture to it. Probably the camera's not picking it up, but it's got a it's got a nice weave to it. 
I think we're getting a lot closer to that Middle Earth Ranger look. So the Athelion Rangers in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings had uh, separate hoods that laced on over the top of their uh, armor. And so something that I'm learning about myself is that because of the length of my hair, I actually can't, for Lord of the Rings look anyway, get away with wearing hoods that have too much structure. Um, it's very built up here around the neck and uh, the hood stands up a bit on the back. So my hair bunches up and it, and it really sort of beefs up my upper half and makes me look very top heavy. Um, this is much more of a Game of Thrones look, I think, than it is a Lord of the Rings look. Yeah, it really is that, really is that sort of low open neckline. There's something very vulnerable about having an exposed sort of neck. There, there's a there's an element of poise to it, to having to having the neck exposed. There's there's that vulnerability for the character. I really think that that is the way. You know what it is? I need gloves. Doesn't that make all the difference in the world? There's something very, there's something very primal about wanting to protect your hands and keep them warm. There's something about wearing fingerless gloves that just says, I am a person who wanders. You know, if I had, if I had my fingers covered, if I had like full leather gloves, um, man, I wish I had some. I, I, it would look too, it would look too professional. It would look soldierly, it would look formal, like the collar on, on, on the, on the gambeson. I think the, the, the fingerless gloves really sort of make it. This is a wool cloak, sort of a combination between a Rwanda cloak and a, uh, and a Moroccan Bernoulli, I think. But if I throw the, if I throw the shoulders back there, it wears just like a regular, a regular cloak. It really, it really is that low neckline that makes, that makes this feel a little bit more regal rather than uptight and closed off. I really think this is the look. I think this is what I was going for. Let me know what you think. Uh, and the reason that I didn't, um, try on the cloak or the hood with absolutely every element is because when you identify that an element doesn't work you shouldn't rely on other elements to fix it the gambeson i don't think worked so i don't think the gloves would have fixed the gambeson i'd rather just find an element that works better than the gambeson and, and then the gloves can do their job so because i know people will ask actually here is what the gambeson looks like with the bracers and with the gloves on and also with the cloak and i'm doing this experiment to really hammer home that you don't need to have these trinkets of sentimental value add to your costume, it doesn't really add very much at all, in my opinion. You can simplify it for yourself and make it much easier by just playing around with what you already have and then nailing the look, nailing the form, and that is what will make it authentic. Every part of your garb is a detail, and all of them come together into one cohesive whole that should say something about your character without you having to say anything at all. Details are specificity. If you have to explain why something is there in order for it to make sense, then it wasn't specific enough. I, I wish there was an easier answer. I, I wish that it was as simple as me making a video. Top 10 things you should add in order to make a more detailed costume. Add a necklace that you say that your mother gave you, but it really isn't that simple. And it took me making this video in order to realize that there's really no such thing as adding detail. There is only good design and authenticity. And I can't necessarily teach you how to design your costume unless I talk to you. And you can't manufacture authenticity. That's counterintuitive. So take the opportunity to have some fun. Go outside, try things out, see what works and doesn't work. And the authenticity will come. The details will come. If you build it, they will come. And if you're looking for some tips on how it is that you can start to build your character's history so that you actually have something to play, then you can check out this video. But in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.